Right, so here's an interesting application of the mean value theorem um, that does come up from time to time. And uh, it's a good example of the sorts of arguments that you can make with the mean value theorem that require sometimes a, a, a little bit of, of patience or cleverness or insight to realize what you're doing. Um, but if you do enough of these with some practice, you can figure out some of the, the tricks to, to sort these things out. Um, so how do we establish this fact? Well. First thing we might notice is that this is the same as showing that the absolute value of sine of b minus sine of a, if we divide by this absolute value on the right, right, and we can divide by a positive number. It doesn't affect the inequality. Same as showing that this is less than or equal to 1. Um, the only catch is that, of course, this doesn't make sense if a is equal to b. But certainly, if a is equal to b, we have 0 equals 0. It works if a equals b. So we'll assume that a is not equal to b. Um, in fact, um, let's assume that a is less than b, right? Because if a is bigger, we can, we can turn things around. Um, now, this should look a little bit like what we have up here in the statement of the mean value theorem, right? Um, so then what we can say is that, well, it seems like what we want to do here is we want to apply the mean value theorem to f of x equal to sine x. And one of the things we know about the sine function is that it's continuous and differentiable everywhere, right, on all of R. So in particular, it's going to be continuous um, and differentiable on the interval from A to B. So therefore, by the mean value theorem, we know that sine of B minus sine of a equals b minus a, or over b minus a, is equal to f prime of c. But what's f prime? Well, the derivative of sine is cosine, right, for some number c. OK. Well, if that's true, then certainly I have this equality. So it would be true that if I took the the absolute value here, I would get the absolute value there, right? Put it here just to be safe, right? And, and now I say, oh, what do I know? What do I know about the absolute value of cosine, right? What do I know about the cosine function? Well, I know that the cosine function is bounded, right? I know that the graph does this. It oscillates between minus 1 and 1, right? So in particular, I know that the absolute value of cosine of c has to be less than or equal to 1. Okay, So this bit here that I'm interested in, it's equal to the absolute value of cosine of some number. I know that that absolute value has to be less than or equal to 1. And that means that this has to be less than or equal to 1. And that's what I needed to show. Okay, um, So that's, a, that's a kind of a, a typical application of the mean value theorem that you might see um, outside of this, this basic context of using the mean value theorem to establish some of the results that we're going to need in, uh, in the subsequent sections.